Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to learn about Docker. Uh, today I want to show you how to set up Docker on a Windows subversion for Linux 2. We're not going to be using Docker Desktop, although if you want to follow along with the tutorial you can use it. Uh, I'm going to try to explain to you what Docker is, some of the basic commands of the Docker file, uh, how to create and build your image and turn that into a container. At the end of the video we're also going to publish the image to a hub and then see how we can bring it up in the cloud. So starting off what I have here is I have a fresh uh, Windows subversion for Linux 2 image. Uh, if you want to know how to create fresh images like these for your test purposes, so for example if I look on drop down here it says Docker tutorial, so I can spin up these as I please. Uh, link is in the description if you want to learn how to do that. So all I have run on this is sudo up get update Right, so I'm up to date. Uh, what, you, what I want to do now and uh, generally as installations go, you want to go to Docker for Linux and in here for Ubuntu because this is an Ubuntu uh, Windows subversion for Linux. You just want to find installation ad instructions, right? So why would you need installation instructions? If you're going to be working with Docker, you're going to need to know how to set it up on your server later on if you want to build a custom machine to uh, to serve your images if you're uh, using like pre-built marketplace stuff and kind of stuff like that or a container optimized os i guess you don't need to do it but generally it's a good idea to know how to do this right so these instructions aren't too hard run your update i've already done that I run this installation here just double checking that uh, seems like i've pasted onto many things, let me go again, there we go, let's say yes and uh, we'll catch up once this finishes. Okay, so that's that part is done, let's go ahead and proceed to the second step in the setup the repository section. We'll do curl, whatever this will do, I am not an expert, nor do I know what these steps do specifically. Uh, that's not so important as to actually knowing how to use the technology. Okay, uh, and now to actually installing Docker Engine. You want to run sudo apt update again because that brings in some registry information, new pointers to new repositories, etc. And you're repulling that now here. What we want to do is we want to get Docker CE and Docker CE CLI. It's going to be important to understand the difference between the two. So while that is going to install, I'm going to explain Docker CE is the engine that runs it kind of like how you have c sharp for c sharp you have the dotnet runtime to run your c sharp code docker c is the same thing okay it's a server you can think of it as an actually an api server okay um, if you aren't unfamiliar with c sharp think of java jvm right they've built java to run on multiple platforms and the JVM is the thing that is built to run for multiple platforms, but Java just runs on the JVM. Okay, so Docker is in the same ballpark where essentially the Docker engine is built to run on any platform, Mac, Windows, or Linux, or any distribution of Linux for that matter. And your Docker image just goes on top of the Docker engine. Okay, so the Docker CLI actually interacts with this uh, docker daemon this docker uh, engine this thing that actually runs your containers and store and builds your images your essentially let's call it docker runtime so that's the docker c docker c cli is a way to interact with that okay so to get a bit of a more clear understanding what we're going to do is we're going to type in sudo docker and that is going to give us you know a bunch of commands that we can run. So this is the CLI. This is the thing that interacts with the daemon. So if we type in, and by the way, you need sudo to invoke the Docker command. So if we type in sudo docker, and we're gonna say like, right, let's just list containers. And uh, like, oh, let's kind of container list, and it's gonna say, cannot connect to the Docker daemon at whatever, right? So the engine is currently not running, we are, there is nothing, uh, there is no place to ask for, do you have any containers? Do you, are you storing any images? 
the thing is not running just like a server, an API that you would do .NET run or node and uh, your index.js to start your server. Same thing, this thing isn't running right now. So let's go ahead and start it. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to go to sudo service and it will be docker and let's start it. Okay, so there you go, it's started. So you can double check this by uh, putting service status all. And here you will see Docker running, right? So this is that service, that daemon, that engine, the runtime, the Docker runtime, right? So now if we go ahead and try to list containers, it's a valid response, although uh, there are, there is nothing because it's a fresh, fresh installation, right? So let's go ahead, clear this. You can see I'm in a Docker tutorial folder specifically. I mean, the location doesn't matter too much, but just understand that it is an empty directory. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into CMD AXE so because I have uh, uh, the .NET tools installed on my Windows side and uh, Docker is just running in the WSL, right? If you install a uh, Docker desktop, what you can do is you can actually go into PowerShell and type in something like WSL list uh, dash L dot dash A. So hopefully you can see this and whoop, dash L dash V, sorry. Uh, you will see some additional uh, WSL instances that are specifically for Docker Desktop, right? So it will provision these automatically for you, all right? So that's just another thing that you can uh, take a look at. But anyway, in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a new web app, and that's just going to give it the name of the folder. Okay, so Docker Tutorial, that's going to be docker docker.tutorial.cs project. So now let's exit this back into the... WSL environment and I've already opened code in this directory and you can see the files here and we're going to be doing a little bit of editing. Okay. So in here, again, I, I can list everything. Here are all the files that are in here as well. And that's primarily to verify that I am indeed in the same directory in both the terminal in here, right? I know I can bring up a terminal here, but that doesn't matter. So the important thing to recognize right now uh, is that this application is on a window box right? And a window box saying it's my computer. It's this physical thing, you know, and uh, it runs with the Windows operating system. And uh, what are the things of how you configure your operating systems? If you have different files on it, and then you have environment variables, which point to different programs, which you can invoke from different places, right? So that's kind of like your built up machine. Usually you don't need the, that many, though, that many things once you're publishing you literally just need a box to run your application right so what is a docker container essentially that, that's what i'm trying to build up to right we will have the application and uh, we want to try to put it into docker now docker uh, as in the engine the thing that is going to run docker containers Docker container is meant to be a lightweight representation of your computer environment, right? So some people compare it to a virtual machine as a main like differential, like to get a main difference between a virtual machine and a container. So if you don't know that already from other videos on the internet, virtual machine is an emulation of your hardware. So you may have an x86 uh, processor or an ARM processor. Uh, those have different instruction sets, ARM processor being more, uh, what's it called, uh, more energy efficient, it consumes less battery. If on an x86 um, processor machine, you would emulate an environment that has an ARM processor, there would have to be an ARM instruction set translation to x86 uh, instruction translation, and that is a costly operation. So in that sense, it could be a not very performant uh, environment. So Docker, instead of emulating the whole hardware, as in the processor, the RAM, uh, the hard drive, it uses all the same hard drive and it just brings in your operating system into there. So specifically, you can think of it a little bit like having multiple users on the same computer. You just log in as a different user, but what you have is uh, your own scope of uh, environments. So you have these system variables and essentially, if you're a different user, you still have access to folders and you can still share your folders with the Docker environment, although that is not so important right now. The important thing to understand is that a container is a 
operating system, a segregated operating system, the sole purpose of which is to run your application, right? So it's going to need .NET to run the application, and it's going to need your application to in order to execute, right? So it's always one application per container. Anyway, I rambled on for too long. Uh, let's go ahead and put this application into a container or first build an image and then into a contain container. Where do we start? We start with a Docker file, right? A Docker file, if you've ever built a build pipeline that builds your application, that's what Docker file is, but for Docker, okay? So you have your application and you have the build process. The build process gives you an image. An image can be used to create a container and run that container, or it can be used to extend other images, okay? And that's primarily primarily the four things that you really need to know about Docker specifically, not, not talking about Docker Compose. So having the Docker file, we want to start with some kind of operating system, right? So again, we're trying to emulate a operating system. So for what I'm going to do for this is, and usually what you would do is the operating system that you want to emulate, you would go into the Google, all glorious centered information. And we're going to say Ubuntu Docker image or Docker. Let's go ahead and type in Ubuntu Docker. And you want to look for something that comes from hubdocker.com. It can also come from places like GitHub, essentially. But th this is uh, your primary place where you want to search for, uh, you know, your images, your uh, base layer as a building block. And so in here, we're just going to get a fresh operating system, right? And here, we will need to specify two things, the repository and the tag, okay? So the repository itself is Ubuntu. So this is what you do. You say from, we want to start from Ubuntu. And then we specify the tag. Now there are a couple of tags, supported tags uh, and respective Docker file links. You can click on these, you can go in here and if you never touch Docker, you're probably not gonna understand any of this. Uh, but <clears throat> essentially what you have here is comma separated lists of uh, tags and uh, depending on which one of these, it's going to, uh, to install us a different uh, version of Ubuntu. If you're not that familiar with Ubuntu, Imagine this is Windows 8, this is Windows 10, this is Windows uh, Vista, whatever, Windows 7 here, and you're picking which version do you want. In our case, uh, the uh, LTS, the long time term support is 20.04, so that's what I'm going to pick, right? So here we have an Ubuntu image from which we're going to start, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're not, I'm going to try to explain to you not to confuse the Docker file and the shell. So shell is specifically this thing here. It's the terminal. It's where I can go echo hello world and hello world is going to get outputted into here. Right here, if we say echo hello world, uh, the Docker building process is not a shell. Okay, so let's leave this here and now using Docker, let's go ahead and try to execute the Docker file. So what we're going to do is we're going to run sudo docker build and dot. So we're going to build the current directory. It's going to find the Docker file and it's going to execute the build. Okay. And here we're going to get a syntax error that it can't pass the, uh, parse the command echo. So echo is not valid Docker build syntax. Okay. At, in order to execute a shell command, that is only valid, val well, not only, but it, that's kind of only valid in an Ubuntu environment. Uh, if we would have a Windows image here, uh, we might need to do something else here. Go ahead and save this and let's go to our terminal. Let's build it again. And here, all we're going to see is uh, the first part will really bring in this Ubuntu image for us. And the uh, next part is gonna build. Right, so I mean, pretty self-explanatory uh, process. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, next thing, it runs a, a echo hello world. So you will see hello world being outputted during the build process, right? So it's not like it's executing somewhere. This is the build pipeline. This is the thing that, you know, takes the hammer and the bricks and whatever and builds your image or your environment, all right? So during this build process, we have outputted hello world. 
let's go ahead and verify what directory we're in. Let's take a look around this Ubuntu environment, right? So to kind of chain the commands, you can put them on the new lines and say at at. If you don't want to put it on your line, just have the at at. I'm just going to do this, right? To kind of have a separation here. Uh, let's go ahead and rebuild. Now you will see that the previous one, the previous image here, you can see it's identifier is already cached. All right. And this is one thing you, that we will need to keep in mind. And we'll take a look at, of an, at an example of how we're going to influence the build uh, process by looking at these containers, right? Uh, so anyway, that has finished. We It looks like we're in the root directory currently. So let's go ahead and create some kind of space where we want to put our application, right? Uh, before we do that, let's just quickly take a look at this image and successfully built this image, right? So this image got successfully built. These numbers are here. What is all this, right? So these are all individual images. So let's uh, type in Docker image list. And here we'll see this F63, which is this image here. And this is where I said that once we build an image, and you can see this latest one that we finished building here, this can then be used to extend another build, right? So once you've built this image, whatever information that may contain, you can bring that into an, a different image and, and a different application, right? So this is how you can basically do a little bit of like class extension if you're thinking about codes or like setup steps. Uh, you know, you set up an environment and then you build different Docker files from that environment. And this is kind of what it is. So Ubuntu is the first environment that we start from. We can start from a pre-built environment that already supports .NET. Uh, or .NET Core, right? We're not doing that because we're learning, all right? So that's important to just understand here. But anyway, uh, this uh, Docker image that we're building currently lacks our application and our application is important, okay? So what I want to do is I want to copy some files, right? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, maybe I think, let's put it here, right? Copy from dot, so from the current directory, which is here into current directory, okay? So what is going to happen is from the current directory, where is our project? We're gonna put it into the current directory of where we're located within the machine here, okay? Within the image. Uh, let's go ahead and actually build instead of listing. And here you can see this is cached again. And when we list all of the things, you can see the Docker file is there and everything else, right? Uh, new image, again, it's a new building block that we can use further in the pipeline, right? So at the moment, we're just building images. We haven't gotten to the last part container because we already covered essentially the building process, which is building this uh, doc, which is this Docker file, which defines the build, how the build process uh, creates your image, which is the things that we listed there. And uh, images are, can be used for other images, right? So you can build a bunch of these images and port them all into one image and then create a container. So the container is where you actually run your application. So we'll get to that part. At the moment, we've gone ahead and copied our application into this current environment. We're not running it yet though. So uh, what we want to do is we want to bring in .NET in order to run this, okay? So let's go ahead and let's say .NET Core install. Ubuntu, because that's our environment. Uh, I don't remember these commands. I don't recommend you do. Might lose sleep over that. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and uh, maybe copy this bit here. So we're going to, let's run it before we copy everything. We get, so we'll run this. Uh, let me just put a backslash here and, and here. And then I'm gonna run dpkg. So because this is a build file, you don't need sudo. So don't include sudo here you're kind of already the master of this environment. And then we want to install the SDK. So after a kind of same as with Docker, we got the repositories here. We're getting repositories for .NET. Make sure we update first. It will be worth now. Let's just keep putting it here. So sudo update. And don't forget the backslash here. And here I'm actually just going to opt in for the .NET SDK 
to install this. And here we go, right? So let's go ahead and uh, back to the terminal. Let's go ahead and build it and let's see what happens. So we get a first error, we get not found. Let's go ahead and install it. Just how we're installing uh, the .NET tools. Let's go ahead and install this, right? So we could run it as part of this command, although uh, this is what I will show you, right? So we're gonna run apt get update and let's also run apt get install dash y we get as a package right let's go ahead and run this and uh, here we're getting the image the update runs so after this has finished it's going to get the widget and it's going to go ahead and install the sdk and after that we're going to take a look at what happens next okay so the build finished let's go ahead and quickly analyze it now we've already done copy before but and what's important is uh, this process could be cached but what's important these long running operations these long running setups it's important for these to get cached so for example if we take a look at this we get setup and uh, the initial update and then it runs uh, the update install sdk5 if we now want to change the version when version 6 comes out uh, this is still cached, although that, that far in time, it's not really that important. It's as you're working with this, uh, it's important to kind of understand where you're going to change some, uh, the commands. So if we put something here, like a work directory or run some other command here, we'll get to the work directory in a second. This will lose its cache. So if you're changing anything before certain commands, they lose cache. So each individual uh, you can think of it this way. Each individual command is cached. Once you introduce something before the command, it doesn't matter if it's before here, everything after that will lose its cache or the cache will be busted for that. Okay. So uh, I would, I, you can try to demonstrate, uh, you can try uh, to run echo hello world here and you will see this gets redownloaded again if we run it somewhere here. So uh, yeah, let's just do a, a hello. And uh, I mean, this shouldn't run too long because all the stuff is cached. Hello world, hello, copies the files, right? We get the files and then we list everything and echo hello world, right? So there is that. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do something actually useful. Uh, we don't want all our files uh, alongside with the root directory. What we want is we want to package them up into an actual folder, right? So let's go ahead and say work there. This is how we define our working directory. This is w the working directory on the side of the container. So here we're going to say uh, docker tutorial and that should be it, right? So just want you to pay attention to the output that we're going to get. Uh, the hello world is not that important. I'm going to stop printing that out. Let's go ahead and rebuild this container. Okay, so pay attention that we are running this command from the directory of the project, from our working directory. Where is this working directory? Now, because uh, the previous working directory was root, it should be root, right? So let's go ahead and just uh, list everything at root. Here we'll just list everything in the current directory. Okay, let's go ahead and rebuild this again. Everything should be cached except these two. First one will... Uh, list everything up to Docker file, Docker tutorial. I think no, actually up to OBJ. So OBJ and Docker tutorial is now a new folder under root. Now you can go ahead and place it into var or user opt or whatever, wherever you want it to, wherever you want to place it. Go ahead and place it there. But just understand that work. Once you say work there, that is placing you in a specific directory and any shell commands that you want to execute execute from there now as well all right so once we're in this working directory we have put our files in there let's go ahead and execute our application right so this command is gonna isn't going to run our application during build this is going to be for later right so we have the dotnet sdk let's go ahead say cmd and usually your production and uh, development files would differ a little bit uh, but this is just an example because you can build there are dockers containers for everything right 
Docker, no, never mind. We want to do .NET. So that's the tool that we select and then we do run. Okay, so this is what is going to be executed once we start our container. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this one final time. Uh, hopefully you didn't find this too tedious, but kind of build up an image of what Docker actually is. We get an ID at the end. What we can do is we can do sudo, sudo docker image ls where we see all of our, not all of our images, dash A to see all of them. Some of them are just like intermediate caches, kind of like, uh, let's say this step here, after we've installed the, the .NET, you can see, the. I usually take the first uh, three letters, 9E3, it's not listed here, it's one of the intermediate containers here, so 9E3, okay? So uh, these are usually not shown to you as something that you can just start up, it's just intermediate cache, which you, you can see a lot of them are taking up, this is probably already a couple of gigabytes of space. Uh, you want to reduce size uh, sometimes and like prune these, right? Otherwise it, it will eat your disk space really quickly. We'll, I'll show you how to clean this up as well. But anyway, it has sped out for us an image ID. And again, refreshing your memory, an image can be used to create other images. Okay, so you can use this as a baseline for other Docker images. Although that is going to be more useful once you actually build environments which depend on Docker images and such. Okay, so we got this ID. Again, you can just use the first three letters. So sudo Docker. Now we want to go ahead and run the image, right? And it will like npm run, and we want to run a script. Here, what we're doing is we're running a image, right? So a couple of commands. You can always dash type dash dash help to see all the available options. I'm just gonna give you a couple of one, a couple of standard ones, dash P, open up the ports. The default one is 5000 on my .NET application. So I'm opening up port 5000 and then I'm gonna again inspect the ID that I had there, which is BB8. So let's do BB8. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass dash IT. And dash IT is just gonna basically uh, give me the sh uh, shell control under the environment that I'm spinning up. So if you think about the Docker container uh, being another operating system, uh, the shell that I'm running here isn't the actual sh shell that's running my container here. So you don't have direct, uh, the terminal is not exactly controlling it. So with IT, what you're doing is you're passing that control into that emulated environment, right? Otherwise, uh, stuff like pressing control C, you can try it on your own and just don't, wa don't want to waste time on uh, restarting and redoing your directories and stuff, right? So anyway, we run the container. So this is where the image is taken. It's put into a container and now it's running, right? And if we press control C, the application is shutting down, right? Uh, I have an error there, so we're gonna go ahead and fix it in just a second, but what we can do now is we can do sudo uh, docker container dash ls, and not dash ls, sorry, just ls to list containers. So no containers, you might be a little bit, uh, well, not a little bit, this is, this is a little bit confusing. There is a container by listing dash A, you can see all the other containers. Here we have run the image BB8, so uh, uh, that is our .NET built image. And uh, uh, the important thing to understand here is that this container still exists, it's just not active. So uh, we can restart it. So let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, and exit it. And here we see the image is spawned in a different container. So rerunning the image doesn't mean you get the same container. Uh, a container can be restarted by, let's see, going to help and using the start command. So start, and again, maybe using something like uh, the first three letters to B9. And again, I think I want to pass the IT in order to started or actually it's going to be a little bit different. So let's just start with 2B9, 2B9 started. So now if we do something like listing the containers, we can see it there. And then we can go ahead and kill the container with this command here. And then we'll kill it. And again, if we list everything, we'll see that container there. 
it was uh, maybe yeah exited three seconds ago so there you go and again if you just list it like this no active containers so if you want to see your inactive containers uh, look at them there okay so anyway for the error that we have uh, just to just so you understand that if in case you are a .NET developer um, WSL is not keen on using localhost so just make sure you replace this uh, we are going to rebuild our container with the new files and uh, now we have a new container let's go ahead and get up to run we'll do 9.3c and now what we should see is being able to access the port on here so let me go and say so once this is started no warning is at the beginning come here and there's our hello world application right so uh, at this point we are pretty much covered all the basic steps that you need to know docker the build process defined by the docker file right here what you're doing is from your current environment your current computer uh, later on once you do build pipelines with azure devops or github actions or jenkins or whatever what you're doing is the environment you're in that you're in that has your application you're throwing stuff into the image by specifying uh, the steps in your docker file so docker file is the definition of what you are going to put and where right so what you're doing and what you're putting there how you're going to run it and what's your base environment so you're defining what you're building you're, you you're gonna, it defines how you build an image once you have an image you can use it as a baseline for your other images right uh you may be asking Oh, how do you well what exactly can i do with it right it's for you to one time you're you're going to be in a situation where you're going to know if you're uh, just starting out but just be patient there and uh, a time will come if you're using docker enough where you will need to do it right but anyway um that is creating images and once you have an image you can go ahead stick it in, in a container and run it and once the container is running that's it now uh, let's go ahead and take a look at publishing our container uh, what i will need you to do is kind of like ubuntu is host hosting it here uh, i'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into repositories my repositories i've created an account here here you can see it and a repository is per docker image so let's go ahead and create a repository we're gonna create a docker tutorial in description i'm not gonna put a description uh, public let's go ahead and create it so this is a space where an image can go okay this is where you store images now here you can see the kind of the namespace and then the tag name so this is where we have ubuntu so instead of this this should be ubuntu and then the tag name should be 2.04 okay so how do we do this so if we do docker uh, let's do sudo docker images list them uh, and not images but image ls so image s is a shorthand kind of thing uh, let's not get into it what we want to do here is you can see here it says repository and tag it. here we can see where it came from we want to do the same with our image we want to tag it with a repository and a tag and then push it to our repository so how do we do this? Let's go ahead and always uh, you can look at the what kind of commands can you do with this? Just type in dash dash help. Again, if we do some other command ls dash dash help, you can see the, all the other commands. But here we have the command tag, right? So again, we can do tag dash dash help, and here you will get the usage, right? What do we want to do specifically? Let's go ahead and say that for our image nine three c, right? I usually take the first three sometimes the first two works unless you have a load of images um but yeah uh here let's come here let's just copy this whole thing here space put it after here and instead of tag name you can put whatever here version number i'm gonna put latest right let's go ahead and run this and now upon listing your images again here you're gonna see the repository and you're gonna see the tag as well uh, what you want to do now is again if we look at dash dash help you will see there is a push push an image 
or a repository to a registry. Let's go ahead and do that. So image push. Uh, what do we want to push? 93C. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So uh, an image does not exist locally with the tag 93C. Uh, obviously, we want to use the tag. So this would be the repository and the tag. Let's go ahead and push it like so. So uh, push uh, refers to repository. So it's preparing request denied access to the resource is denied. So we're basically not authenticated. So you need to be authenticated in order to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sudo docker login, you log in. After successfully log in, let's go ahead and try to push this again. And depending on your internet speed, I mean, you saw it's like half a gigabyte. Uh, just wait for this to be finished and uh, then we shall continue. So at this point, the image has been pushed. If we come back to the registry and I refresh, uh, here what I should be able to see is for tags and scans. There we go, our latest tag, right? Awesome, right? So now this is a public repository. Uh, you could probably visit this URL and take a look at it and pull this image. You know there is not much in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my uh, Linode console and I'm going to spin up a virtual machine in there and we're going to take a look at it. So here I'm on the creation screen of Linode. Uh, I will leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and try Linode. I'm pretty sure a lot of cloud providers um, give out free credit. If you use that credit and later you get charged, I get paid. So uh, support me if you like the content I make. So anyway, um, grab Docker. I'm going to avoid the options. I'm going to grab all the default stuff, London, uh, cheapest Linode. Uh, let's go ahead and put in a password so we can connect. And let's go ahead and create it and uh, we'll reconvene once this is finished. So at this point, it finished booting up. Let's go ahead and grab the IP address to where we want to connect. Okay, so once we're here, uh, we can go ahead, type in Docker. We're going to have the command line tools. And in case you don't have the command line tools, uh, if you're trying this, just wait a little bit. It has a bit of a setup process to it, right? But anyway, uh, what we can do is we can say Docker containers or container ls we'll list our containers we can do the same for images just to quickly list images which we don't have any so again going to image help we can essentially what we can do is pull images we will grab the name of this replace the tag name with latest and once that has finished to run uh, i mean it's it's ready to go, uh, right? Let's go ahead and um, Docker images. Here we have our image, uh, 93C. Docker run, we can uh, set it to be uh, in the background. Let's open up the ports, 500, 5,000, 5,000. Uh, 93C is the image. And uh, that's it. I actually don't think it's B, it's D, right? That's the name or the ID or whatever it is, docker container, C. container, I don't know how to spell things, you know, there's our running uh, docker container, Just, uh, the point of putting D is that it's not going to be an interactive shell, so it's, you're putting it as a background process essentially, uh, yeah, now what you can do is you can take the IP address, uh, obviously this is not a production setup, this is like five minutes to get you up and running, uh, putting his cell certificates and all that stuff takes a little bit more time, a little bit more research. Thank you very much for watching. This will be it for this video. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you would like me to cover any other topics, also leave them in the comment section. You can also reach out to me on Discord. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Obviously helps the channel. I stream on Wednesdays and Sundays. Make sure you join. Hopefully I'll see you in my other episodes.